So I haven't been uploading to YouTube much lately. And you know what? In the last couple of months, my Amazon FBA business has grown zero. So what's going on? What's changed? And why are things getting so difficult? Well, in this video, I'm gonna reveal exactly what is going on. What's up guys, welcome to the video. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Uh, it's good to see you again. I know I haven't been around here that much this year, but that's hopefully gonna change soon. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Miles, uh, and this channel that you're on right now is all about teaching you basically everything that I've learned in my own Amazon FBA journey, going from zero a couple of years ago to leaving my job, starting this business, selling now just over $3 million, uh, and then passing that all on to you, hopefully, so that you can make a transformation like I've been able to do. So in this video, I wanted to give you an update on my Amazon business, how it's been going so far in 2019, talk about why it hasn't been growing um, or not growing very much anyway, and some of the challenges and obstacles that I have encountered and am encountering and what I'm doing about them. So hopefully you can learn something from this. Um, and as well, just it's good sometimes to get an insight into like a real business and you know what's happening. So I hope you do get value out of this again. Give the video a thumbs up, please, if you do find it useful. I really appreciate it. So without further ado, I'm gonna hop you into my Amazon Seller Central dashboard now, I'll show you the numbers from January 1st um, up until today is the 21st of March. I'll show you why they don't look that great compared to last year. Um, and then we'll talk about all the problems and what's going on and what I'm doing about them. So let's go and look inside my computer at my Amazon numbers. Okay, so this is my Seller Central sales dashboard. Uh, and hope you don't mind the camera setup right there. We're looking at today's and it's going okay. I'm going to make around three and a half to four thousand dollars. Now that has really been um, the sort of mark that I've been at for most of the last 12 months. And so you can see today is the blue line. And so it's less than yesterday. Uh, it's also less than the same day last week, which was actually a really bad day. Three thousand dollars is really bad. Um, but I want to show you this in comparison to the sort of time series throughout this year. And then we'll also look at how it looks like um, compared to last year. So if I go to year to date, and by the way, this is my American account. I'll show you my UK sales in a second, but this is where the majority of my sales and my profit comes from. Um, so year to date, January until March 21st, we're looking at $366,000 up to today. Um, but this shows you what this year looks like in comparison to last year. So yeah, like I got some growth in January. This year we did $168,000. Um, and last year it was $124,000. But then February was like almost exactly the same. That's less, that's like 5% growth year on year. Um, 121 this year versus 115 last year. Just as a side note, if you are looking at these numbers and thinking, you know, wow, that's really freaking fantastic. Definitely on certain scales it is, um, but there are two things to consider. First of all, of course, is this isn't profit, this is revenue. Um, I do go through my profits in a number of videos on my channel. I'll probably, I'll link one up here for you so you can check that out if you're interested in knowing my profit margins and what the num what the number is like at the end of the day, how much am I taking home? So this is just revenue. The second thing is something that I mentioned to a friend recently, be very aware of the hedonic treadmill as an entrepreneur or with anything in life, basically as you set goals and you grow and you start you know building businesses or achieving greater and greater things as you go through life, what happens unfortunately is that it all normalizes. So whether this says in a month, you know, $10,000 or it says $100,000 or it says $500,000 or a million dollars, you get the point. I'm essentially gonna feel the same sort of satisfaction out of that number, no matter how big or small it is. Um, it's all relative to where I've been and how much I'm growing. It's unfortunate. It's, it's something to be really aware of as an entrepreneur because like it's very easy to see this really big number, which is for a lot of people, it's, it's life-changing money and to be disappointed. So I wanna put that out there that I'm not disappointed as such by this, um, but at the same time, it's not much growth on last year. And so if there's an issue there, which there may be, then we need to talk about it and work out why, right? But be aware of that hedonic treadmill. Do Google that and you know check it out if you're not familiar with the term. You'll save yourself a lot of mental pain and potentially disappointment later on. So. Anyway, February, not growing very much. And then March, mm, it might even be lower than last year. Um, so I'm expecting still to grow like 20% this year. Um, and there are a number of reasons why. So last year I grew 100% year on year. And the year before that, 
was my first year in business. So I did 1 million in my first year, roughly. And then last year was roughly 2 million, 100%. Uh, and then this year being the third full year, I'm expecting to get, you know, 2.4, 2.5 million, something like that. That's US, um, by the way. And then just briefly to see my UK sales. Uh, where are they? Here they are. So UK, uh, we should see more growth in the UK this year, much smaller than your, our US uh, account. So last year it was only 100,000 pounds. So it's like 120,000 US dollars. Uh, and then this year, I don't know what that'll be, maybe 150 or something like that. Not too much higher, but we should get some good growth there. Um, again, margins, it's, this is revenue. So, you know, you gotta take the profit margins out of that. There's one thing I wanted to show you in my computer, having seen these numbers and you can see that, you know, basically it might be a big number, but the growth, which is how much the business is becoming more profitable over time, the growth isn't that great. Um, I've said many times on this channel, you should be able to grow your business, particularly at the start, 100% year on year. Um, and I, I still say that, that still should be true. So why am I not able to do this? I wanna show you one reason that you might assume it would be, but it actually isn't, at least not in my opinion. And this is just, this is me as you know a seven figure seller, but in my own sort of little circle of experience, I guess, talking to the seven figure sellers that I know, um, quite a few six figure sellers as well, basically just having my ear on the ground and seeing what the Amazon FBA landscape is like. So a lot of people are saying that, oh, it's 2019, Amazon FBA is dead, it's too saturated, blah, 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 like that's why you can't grow anymore. I don't really think that that's the case, to be honest. Um, don't really have data to back this up, but my gut feel, this is my gut feel from talking to people, like the same strategies, they all still work. People keep asking me, well, you know, what are you doing differently now this year? Um, or you know, in the last couple of months versus six months ago, and realistically, not much has really changed. There is one thing that I wanna show you if you're a new seller looking to get into Amazon FBA or you're really at that beginning stage trying to um, get started and get to that fast growth period that I just described. I think 2019 is gonna be a better time for new sellers like yourself if you can treat this like a real business. Um, I use Google Trends so much when I'm, when I'm researching product ideas, when I'm researching business ideas as well. Um, and just to see like how things are basically, what are markets like, are they saturated? Are they up and coming? Are they uh, stagnating or dying? So this is Amazon FBA and its popularity over time. And essentially when I started, which was here, it actually got a lot more competitive. And so basically if the line goes up, there's a lot more demand, there's a lot more people um, researching this topic, right? So or in other words, a lot more people trying to get into Amazon FBA. Um, and between the time when I started, which was here, and then like the start of 2018, this period where you can see it got a lot more competitive, that really correlated really well with the products that I had that I was selling. I've talked about some of them on, on my channel where some products, they started off doing well and then they sucked because so many new sellers came in and just saturated those markets. That happened in 2017 as the line was going up. And then honestly, last year in 2018, and then so far for the start of 2019 as well, you can see it's gone down and then sort of flatlined. And that really correlates with my experience as well, at least in the niches that I'm selling in um, and that I know other people are selling in. There aren't that many new competitors coming in. There are new competitors, but not that many, not enough to, you know, to say that Amazon FBA is dead or it's saturated or it's over. It really just depends how you're approaching this, I think anyway. So that's one little piece of information I wanted to show you. So in my opinion, my business isn't not growing super quickly because Amazon FBA is dead. So I just wanted to put that out there. I'm gonna hop back to this camera and I'm gonna talk about what are the real problems that I've been experiencing. What am I gonna to do to try and get back on track so that I can continue growing? Um, and why is it a slower rate than it was before? So let's hop back. Okay, let's continue. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is market maturity. This is another reason why it may look like things are getting more difficult, but it's actually not. So Amazon in previous years, sellers have had a lot to complain about. Um, Amazon has a good track record of drastically increasing its FBA fulfillment fees. So year on year, basically, if you had a product, you'd be paying you know, $5 in FBA fees. And then <laughs> come February the next year, that would go up from $5 to $5.50 or some like pretty significant increase. And if you get a couple of them year on year, then suddenly like your product isn't that great anymore if, you, if your margins were small to start off with. Um, so Amazon hasn't done that this year. They actually decreased some fees. So that's kind of like, it's like they're trying to mature their platform and actually make, you know, the environment, the business environment 
I wouldn't say more friendly for sellers, but it's not getting worse, put it that way. They're also releasing a bunch of new features. I got invited to a couple of beta programs um, recently, one being the North American Remote Fulfillment Program. So in simple terms, normally, say you're selling on amazon.com, you send everything into the US. If you wanted to expand out to Mexico to the South and to Canada to the North, which are both really quickly growing markets, they're growing about 100% year on year. If you wanted to grow into those, you have to basically do everything all over again, send shipments to Canada or send them to Mexico, um, enroll, do everything separately in those countries, do all the import stuff. But with this, the NARF, the beta program anyway, um, you still send everything to the US where you're already selling, it's the biggest marketplace. And then Amazon does all of that other stuff and they send it to the other countries for you. So you don't have to deal with that. Little things like that really do make things uh, easier. They make life easier for us as Amazon sellers, whether you're an existing seller um, or a new seller. So tie that into what I said before about, at least in my personal experience, a lot of niches are not getting more competitive over time. They're kind of just staying stable. That's a good thing. If you can come into this, add value, which is what I teach, um, and stay away from the really sort of like flashy niches where it looks really, really good for a short period of time. Lots of people come in and just trash the niche, which if you do what I teach on this channel or in my course, um, you will stay away from those niches anyway. And I personally stay away from them. But if you do, then, you know, things basically are kind of cruising along at the moment, at least at this point in 2019. So again, that is not a bad, uh, bad reason or a reason why my business isn't growing. The first thing that I want to talk about that has been a challenge is product quality issues. And this just comes back to the most fundamental problem that we all have, whether it's your first product or your 10th or your 20th or your 50th, whatever, you always have to focus on having a good quality product. I've had one specific defect for my most profitable product. It's been one of my first products and it has been since day one. And since day one, I've had issues with a particular defect that I just haven't been able to fix. And I'm spending a lot of time and effort trying to fix that defect, or we are in the business, because I know that if we can do that, then you know the product will get better reviews. And when it gets better reviews, it has a better conversion rate. More stars particularly really bump the conversion rate up. When you get a better conversion rate, you rank easier. Basically, everything just happens so much easier. And this isn't a hack. This is not a secret strategy. This is just fundamentals of you know doing good business, basically. If your product sucks, or if your product has a really bad problem with it, that's probably the reason why your PPC ACOS is really high. That's probably the reason why you're getting clicks but no sales. Um, it's probably the reason why you can't rank. All of these things just come back to the most simple fundamentals. Um, and I'm still learning this lesson, you know, two years later. So product issues really, really do hurt new sellers as well as existing sellers. But let this be a lesson to you. If you're currently looking at a product, you're currently getting samples, test really thoroughly and basically use the product for weeks. Um, I wouldn't recommend do, jumping into something super quickly. And definitely like I've heard people say skip samples. You're really opening yourself up to a world of trouble if you do skip critical steps like that. So I hope I can solve this issue on my end, but you know, whatever the case, focus on product quality. It really will make all the hacks and the strategies down the line so much easier if you just get that part right. So that's one thing that has actually been dragging the sales down is that review rating on one particular product um, is getting worse over time. So the next thing is not really a problem that depending on how you look at it, but basically I've been spending too much time doing this. Now, if you have subscribed to me for a while and you've watched some of my videos, you know that even though I am running a successful Amazon business, I don't share much of this on the channel. You don't like see much blingy stuff. You don't see fancy cars, for example. Um, but this is one thing that I am really proud of and I do want to share it with you guys. It's essentially moving to this next, like ticking off a big bucket list item on my dream list. Um, so I bought a yacht. We are now sailing it down. We've already left Florida currently as of filming. This is the Bahamas right here, um, or that was the Bahamas. And we'll be sailing it down as far south as we can get in the next couple of months. I'm not a sailor, I don't have much sailing experience, but we're doing it. And the flip side of con constantly moving forwards, constantly striving to you know, achieve new goals or to achieve new experiences basically, is that your life and your routines are always in this state of flux and constantly changing. Now, what I showed you for that 10 seconds or whatever it was, um, is the good, the, the fancy side basically. But what you don't see 
and what I haven't been able to show you at all is the impact that has on my routines, my productivity, my ability to run a business or literally just to put the hours in, in a stable workspace with a computer, with a good internet connection um, to be able to do those activities that I need to do to grow my business. So that's the stuff that you don't see. Now, this isn't a bad thing because I plan for this. So I, this is like a plan of three years come true, but it is super important that when you're watching all of these videos, particularly the flashier ones, where you're just seeing a lot of fast cars and bling and expensive watches and things like that, you don't buy too much into that lifestyle or that dream because there's always this reality basically behind it. And that reality is probably not that glamorous. Um, or there are consequences if you try and achieve or chase that reality. So that is really the major reason why my business hasn't been growing that much is because literally this is something that I planned for, for for three years. And now what I'm doing is working out the challenges associated with achieving that dream. Basically what I've had to do is literally implement the four hour work week. If you're familiar with the book, with Tim Ferriss's work, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but if not, it's a pretty self-explanatory name. But in this case, I'm taking it literally. So in the last couple of months, I have worked four hours per week or less on my Amazon FBA business. And again, there are just these critical activities that if you don't put the hours in, um, your business can't grow. It doesn't fall apart if you put everything in place correctly, you put the right systems in place, um, you hire good people to work for you, or even if you just have a few products, you don't need anyone else below you. But you know, if you have a seven figure business, generally you probably want at least a VA, maybe a couple. But you can do it. You can do the four hour work week. And I've talked about this on my channel before about how it's, you know, passive income is not really something you should be striving for. I'm in the process now of changing my mind about that. Um, again, it's, it's pretty hard to take to see my numbers not going up year on year, not growing 100%, these massive amounts, these big numbers, right? Um, again, with that hedonic treadmill, it becomes hard to take. But I think it's super important. So I guess in terms of practical advice um, from what I'm getting out of this, make sure that you have not just a short-term plan. So if you've got your first products up and running, if you're seeing money coming in from your Amazon FBA business, um, this is definitely the time where you should be at least thinking about this stuff. Is like, okay, so you've got, you're making some money now, but where do you wanna go from here, right? So not just like next, you know, the next products, um, cause you don't wanna be launching products for the next 20 years, for example where are you in 12 months or in 24 months or in a couple of years or like what's the five year goal? Where does this all lead to? Because generally most of us, we're not launching products that we're super passionate about. That's just a harsh reality. Um, I think it's a better way of doing it because you can then sell products that are more likely to actually make you money versus products that you love and you can use the money to do a lot of other stuff and then later on do the stuff that you love. That's a roundabout way of looking at it. That's my personal way of looking at it. But the fact is that, you know, you can get caught up on this hedonic treadmill and just constantly be chasing this like massive amounts of growth each year. And you can do it, it's doable. But at the end of the day, you're not necessarily getting happier. You know, you're not improving the lives of your family if that's what you care about or whatever it is that you wanna do, this may not get you there. So have that longer term goal. For me, this is my longer term goal. I, I always wanted to sail around the world. I don't know whether I'll make it around the world, but I'm doing it. I'm still running the business. It's not growing as much but it's all sort of happening together in, in cohesion right now. And so that means some sacrifices. There are a few other things that I wanted to just have a dialogue with you. Um, if you are interested in knowing more about this side of building an Amazon business, which is like, okay, so you got to the stage where you've got some products. Once you've got those mechanics down, then what happens? How do you really use it to maximize your life? I know that most of you just want product research, for example, or product launch strategies, and that's completely fine. But if you are interested in seeing this other side, like what, what's the next stage, then leave me a comment down below or message me, give the video a like, just so I know that there's that response because this is the stuff that I'm going through right now. I'm still doing all of the launch stuff, particularly probably in about two to three months, um, we'll be going back through a big launch cycle, doing a whole bunch of new products, doing all the product research. So I'll have a lot more content about that coming out while I'm doing that. But right now, what I'm doing is implementing the four hour work week. So if you do wanna know like, how does the four hour work week actually look like in implementation, in reality, um, from a real case study, then let me know. I do make these videos specifically for you guys. So just tell me in the comments down below. And the next thing I wanted to share while talking about all of this with you and sharing is limiting beliefs. Now, this is something that I thought didn't really apply to me that much. Once I got past the beginner stage myself, 
Um, it was like, you know, my mind was blown wide open and I thought I could do anything. But recently I've actually realized that limiting beliefs still apply to me, just as they probably do to you as well. So a limiting belief basically is where you set a goal or a target um, based on what you think is possible. And what you think is possible is limited by certain beliefs, right? So like I said, like 100% year on year is normally possible, but I've always had this belief in the back of my head that once I got to around this stage that I'm at now, it suddenly becomes less possible. Um, and that's just from some other sellers that I talk to, um, basically where it's like you get to a certain point and then it's really hard to keep growing rapidly, to keep launching more products. You just have more, like you've got more business to take control of. And so that's why I actually planned this year to grow at around 20%. But I've had a couple of conversations recently with other successful Amazon sellers doing seven, multiple seven figures. And both two of these guys have both managed to double or more their businesses in a really short period of time from, I'm talking from, you know, $100,000 to $200,000 or from $200,000 to like $350,000 per month, which to me is incredible to think about. Now I know if you're watching this and you are just looking to get started, for example, then those numbers probably all sound the same. They all sound really big, but take it from me because I've been where you are now that you will have those limiting beliefs and you just need to crush them as best as you can because you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Like it might take a while to get there, but you can do it and someone else is doing it, somebody else has done it before, so there's no reason why you can't as well. So if you want to 10 times your business, if you wanna go from $100,000 um, a year, for example, to a million dollars a year, you can do it. If you want to double from $10,000 a month to $20,000 a month or whatever the goal is, you can do it. So just find those people who are doing it if you need to, but yeah, everything is possible, guys. So I wanted to share something positive to end this video on a high note. By the way, as part of this four hour work week experiment um, and also doing the sailing thing that I'm doing this year, it is harder for me to film these videos and to keep releasing them. So that's one of the reasons why I haven't been um, releasing much on YouTube this year. I've just finally realized that I need to bite the bullet. I'm booking hotel rooms, you know, like once or twice a month to get all of these videos out for you guys. So you should start to see content from me more regularly. So if you aren't already a subscriber, um, definitely click that subscribe button right now. You'll learn a lot from me this year, I promise. And if you are, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.